So next talk is about uh, KSM. Um, I'll talk about what is um, kernel same page merging or KSM, give a short architectural overview at a high level how KSM works. Then I continue with um, how it can, be, how your applications need to be configured. Um, and then as a next step, how do you actually trace that, uh, uh, how are you able to trace the KSM operations? Um, after we have the basics, I will talk about how KSM uh, is being used um, at Meta. We'll look at some metrics. And um, then I continue with how, how you or we evaluate new workloads um, if they are good candidates for KSM. And at the end, I'll, I'll uh, mention also some limitations and security concerns that you should consider if you want to use um, kernel safe page merging. So what is kernel same page merging? The, the, the high level idea is, is very simple. It's uh, that you want to deduplicate anonymous pages. It's not a new feature. It's been in the kernel since 2009, but in the last two years, there has been uh, increased interest in it. Originally, it was only developed, um, or the original use case was to support virtual machines and support deduplication of memory there. But as you will see, um, there are additional use cases which can benefit from KSM. So how does KSM work? So uh, KSM is using a current background thread, which is called KSMD. And that uh, background thread is scanning um, pages which have been um, nominated for KSM usage. In this presentation, I will call these pages uh, the candidate pages. So uh, in, in comparison to all the other pages which are not uh, uh, used for KSM. So um, at, a, at, a sim at a simple view, KSM basically uses three phases. And here is a short picture which um, tries to describe these phases. So you see, you do an M advice system call to say, I want to use KSM for a certain memory region. Then um, in the first phase for all the pages in this memory region, you call something which is called RMAP items, which are representing these uh, individual pages. At the first step, you create a hash, and that hash um, is there to see if, um, if the page changes, because if a page changes too frequently, it's not a good candidate. So in the in the in the next iteration of the, uh, of scanning, um, if the hash hasn't changed, then uh, it's entered in what is called an unstable tree. And if you have pages that, or if you find a page that is already part of the unstable tree, it's added to the stable tree. And um, what is also happening at that point is that there is a KSM page created and the other two or more pages basically point with the page table entries to the, to the KSM page. Um, I made a simplification. So in the beginning, actually, you do not um, calculate the hash. You first look into the stable tree if, if that page that you have is already in the stable tree. Uh, but in terms to explain it, I thought it's, uh, it's easier to, to, to go through the stages. So what do you have to do to enable KSM for your application? So there are two approaches. There is the old approach, which was the m advice system call. And there is a new approach that uh, I introduced with process control system call, which has a new option. Um, not all memory regions can be used for KSM. So there are certain exclusions. So if you have DEX, if you have a huge TLB, if you have 
shared uh, VMAs that are shared, then it cannot be used uh, for KSM. So memory region uh, must be compatible. So the old way of enabling um, uh, KSM was the M advice system call. So you were saying, yeah, for this region, I want to enable KSM. And uh, if the memory region is compatible, then uh, that region was enabled for KSM. Uh, you can also do the opposite and uh, disable KSM for a memory region. The problem with the old approach is that you kind of had to guess which memory regions give you benefits because there was no feedback which telling you how many KSM pages did you actually have in that memory region. So the new process control um, option that was added with 6.4 um, operates a bit differently. It operates at the process level so that when you enable it, all the VMAs of the process inherit or that are compatible um, have KSM enabled. In addition, the setting is also inherited when you fork the process. So when you create child processes, also they will have uh, KSM enabled. I will explain a few slides later why that is important for us. Um, you can see there are, um, there are two examples of the API, how to use it. And uh, one is to set it, the other one is to, to query it. So now after we enabled it for our, enabled our applications to use KSM, um, um, we also want to configure it system-wide. So to configure it system-wide, there is a syskernel mmksm. Um, there you find um, several files which, which are for monitoring and for controlling KSM. One of them is called run. So if you write run, uh, if you write one to the run file, then uh, KSM gets enabled. There are also two other files that I want to mention, which are parameters. One is pages to scan and the other is sleep milliseconds. Uh, pages to scan uh, tells you how aggressive the uh, kernel background thread KSMD will scan for pages. And the parameter is, is a batch value. So what happens is you scan a batch of pages, then you sleep, then you scan a batch of pages and so on. Uh, and sleep milliseconds is the sleep time. So the other, the other um, challenge that you had is monitoring KSM. So um, in this kernel MMKSM, uh, there are uh, several files and also in KSM stat, some files in uh, KSM have been added recently, and uh, I talk shortly about them. The other thing that has been added with 6.6 uh, .6 is um, new additions to proc pit SMAPs and SMAPs rollups. So you can actually now figure out which BMAs or virtual memory areas benefit the most from KSM. So there is a KSM entry for each um, for each virtual memory area, and it tells you actually how many KSM shared pages uh, uh, belong to this virtual memory area. So the general monitoring for KSM is in this kernel MMKSM. So there are um, several that are helpful and important. So pages shared is how many KSM pages you have. Pages sharing is how many, how many are using these uh, KSM pages. Uh, pages skipped, I will talk later, it's a new feature. Um, pages unshared is they are unique, they don't change, but you have no sharing for these pages. And pages volatile are simply pages that change too fast, so uh, they are not good candidates. Uh, and pages scanned is a new addition. Um, because it actually tells you how much work you do per, per scan that was missing. You couldn't uh, find out how many pages you were scanning for each scan round. And full scans is the number of scans that happened altogether. 
So another challenge that you had is um, you couldn't really figure out how long a scan took because there was no tracing. Um, so you couldn't, you didn't know when uh, tracing started and stopped. So uh, I added also trace points. So the two most important is uh, KSM start and stop scan. Um, there are additional trace uh, traces um, that might be helpful. Enter and exit is enter is when a new virtual memory area has KSM enabled, and the other one is when uh, it's disabled for that VMA. The other four are more for internal debugging. So now that we have the basics, like we know how to, we have to modify our applications. We know how to, uh, how to configure the system. We know how to trace or how we can trace or monitor the system now. How did we use it at Meta? So, or why do we use it at Meta? So Instagram was facing memory pressures and on older uh, architectures, it was not all the, uh, only facing memory pressure, it was also facing CPU pressure, So, which is a more difficult um, combination. Um, how does the workload look like? So the workload looks like you have a controller and you have at least 32 worker processes. Uh, the number of worker processes depends on architecture and uh, how powerful it is. So, and all the worker processes um, do the same thing when they start up. They initially load their interpreter in memory, and but not also that. They also share a lot of other data structures that uh, often get loaded on demand. So we saw that uh, KSM seemed to be a good fit for this type of workload because there is potential a lot of memory sharing possible. So at this point, there was only the, the M advice system call, but at Meta, we needed something different because generally we, uh, we start C groups and we start C groups through system D. So that's why the idea of the process control changes came because uh, what we wanted to do is we enable when we start uh, the C group um, KSM in the C process, and then it gets inherited for all the child processes. Um, and that's what process control interface uh, or the, the new option in the process control interface that I described earlier exactly does. So you have it in the C process, and when you fork, um, all the child processes inherit the setting. But of course, that was only part of the story because we also needed a change to system D. So system D now has also um, a new uh, option, which is called memory KSM. Um, with memory KSM, you can, you can specify that option when you define your service and when you start it, then KSM is automatically enabled for you. So advantages, you don't need to change your application to use it. So, when I originally started testing KSM at, um, at Meta, uh, the results were very disappointing to say the least. Basically no sharing was, uh, was taking place. So after um, analyzing a bit what's going on, I figured out that pages to scan value by default is set to 100. So 100 is way too low for uh, any real workloads. And later on, I also saw in documentation, it says, uh, only sufficient for demo workloads. So, uh, so yeah, it's it's uh, you need to know that. Uh, and of course, at that time there was also no tracing available. So, uh, it took a bit longer to to find out. So, in in our in the experiments that we have run with production workload, four to five thousand uh, seems to be a good compromise for the pages to scan value. I also tested with some other workloads um, uh, to a lesser extent, and there we see two to 3,000. So generally a good guideline um, how to set uh, the value is that you look at the memory savings and that you look um, at the scan time. If the scan time is in the range of 20 minutes, then probably this is not, your pages to scan value is way too low. Uh, we generally run with two to three minutes, something like that. It depends also how many pages you have to scan. 
So how do the metrics look like for a typical, typical job? Um, so you can see we have pretty good sharing. Um, we share uh, over 2.1 million pages in this example. Um, we have KSM pages over 70,000. So um, if you calculate it, this is on a 64 gig machine, we're saving around six gigabyte in memory. So which is uh, for us a huge saving. And if you consider the fleet, then uh, this multiplies accordingly. So he, what you here can see, uh, it's this picture shows the page, page sharing after the, the software is started. So you see how we have a ramp up and then um, it stay, stays pretty nicely in the 1.8 to 2.1 range. Depends a bit how much, um, how high the load is, but um, uh, it's very effective for, for our workload. Uh, here I have a more extreme case. Here we run the box to the uh, close to the maximum. You can see here we're saving um, around five uh, million pages. Uh, if you look at the second line, paging, pages shared, you see it's close to five million. So, um, but of course, in this is an extreme case, we want to test how the system behaves under extreme load. Uh, but that's not how we generally run our our software. So when we looked at the at some additional data like this how many pages we scan per cycle, we were seeing that we we're scanning a huge number of, of pages. So especially during the startup time, the number of pages that we scan is uh, is huge. So in the startup time, we're scanning per cycle 20 to 26 million pages. During the once uh, the, the, the memory usage stabilizes, it's more 8 to 12 million. But even for these 8 to 12 million, we have a lot of pages that we repeatedly scan, but they're unique, so there is no sharing. So the idea was let's keep some uh, additional information per page in the RMAP item. And based on that, uh, if it hasn't been successful a couple of times, to share that page, let's keep that page in the next scan. So, and then after that, we try the page again. And if it doesn't work again, so we increase the, the, the skip count. Um, and we go to a max skip count right now of eight. So um, the new feature is um, is already is already um, upstream for six, seven. Um, feature is on uh, and what we see is that it reduces the number of pages that need to be scanned per scan cycle by 10 to 20%. So if you think about 20 million pages, 20% is a lot. So, and we will see later on, I talk about a second feature, which is currently in design review or a discussion that in combination with this feature, this uh, can translate to considerable CPU savings. So that second feature is uh, auto-tune or advisor name is unclear. Uh, there are different sorts. Um, I already talked during startup time, we have to scan a lot more pages than later on. So, but how aggressive we scan, we have to basically base on the initial startup or ramp up time. Um, because we want to scan these pages as fast as we can. So that might, but that means we have to increase the pages to scan value. However, later on, when we're more in stable state, we could actually scan a lot less aggressive. So the idea is basically to have some information, do some optimization based on the pattern that we see and um, adapt the pages to scan parameter accordingly. So the idea was to optimize for a target scan time. And uh, target scan time is basically that we say how long um, 
or what is our goal to scan all the candidate pages? Um, and there are two parameters that you can limit uh, how much CPU we spend. There is a min CPU usage and there is a max CPU usage. And um, these basically translate into pages to scan values. So we know how, how much CPU we used in the last scan cycle. We know how long the scan cycle took. So we can make the uh, corresponding um, calculations. So the results that we've seen so far are very promising. Um, so during startup, we scan with up to five to 6,000 or 4,500, it depends a bit. Um, so in once it reaches steady state, uh, we can see that it automatically reduces the, uh, the pages to scan rate to 2,500, um, sometimes even less. So it depends on, on the load that you're currently uh, seeing. So what this translates to are CPU savings for the KSMD kernel background thread of 20 to 30 percent, though which is considerable savings for us. It also has shown that um, the that helps improve um, the throughput of the system that we see. So throughput is a bit better. Um, uh, the other point is that the config configuration in terms of scan time and CPU min and max is a lot more meaningful for admins because for an admin, it's ra rather difficult to reason about pages to scan, which is a batch parameter, which might run end, which will run end times until the scan is finished. So how does this look like? So uh, you can see um, at the beginning when we have more pages, you can see um, what we see here on the y-axis is pages to scan. On the x-axis, you see the, uh, the time horizon. Uh, so you can see when the software starts up, uh, we automatically start up or increase the, the pages to scan rate very rapidly. And afterwards, after the, uh, the initial uh, spike, we basically go back to a lower scan rate, and if demand changes, then um, the pages to scan uh, parameter is adjusted accordingly. Uh, and you can see it's around half of what uh, uh, it otherwise would be if we have to uh, adjust for the, for the startup uh, phase. So that basically concludes the, the Facebook section. Now I'm generally talking about um, how do you approach it when you want to see if new workloads are actually good candidates for, for KSM. So the easiest way now is to enable process with process control um, KSM for your application. Uh, so you can either change your application, you can use the new system vSwitch, or you inject, some, uh, inject it into the executable with LD preload or something uh, similar. The first two approaches are, of course, preferred. So then you run the application. And to gain an idea how well KSM works, there is now... Um, uh, in syskernel MMKSM, there is general profit. General profit tells you how much memory you actually saved. Um, and so you, and it, it calculates it in such a way that um, it also considers the internal data structures that we need to keep for KSM. Um, and then you can, uh, you can look at individual processes. So, if you are on 6.6, .6, you can look at uh, SMAPS rollups. There is a small typo here. The S is missing. Um, 
the SMAPS roll-ups, which basically gives you a breakdown over all the VMs A's that you have and how much KSM usage you have. So that's probably a, general, a pretty good idea. Um, so, but um, to get meaningful values, it makes sense to, to repeat this exercise with different pages to scan values. Um, because depending on that, you have to see how your uh, how the savings are for your workload. Um, the scan time, as I mentioned earlier, gives you some hints um, if if uh, if the setting is is in the right ballpark, uh, and the default, as I mentioned earlier, is is not uh, adequate. So if you want to optimize further, because often it's the case that an application has certain memory areas which especially profit from KSM and others do not. Um, so there is also PROCPIT SNAPS and also PROCPIT SNAPS has now a KSM entry. So you can, you can basically look through your SMAPs and see which uh, uh, virtual memory areas uh, benefit the most. And then you can um, change your application to use M advice calls, especially for these ones. And later, uh, and after you've done that, you can remove the PRCTL API because uh, you basically changed your application to optimize the use of KSN. Uh, one general advice is smaller page sizes generally work better for KSN because the sharing opportunities are simply bigger. So there is, there is an additional idea currently, and I would also like to hear some, uh, some opinions. So to evaluate new workloads currently, the only way is you run an experiment to find out if that workload um, is a good candidate for KSM. However, it, you might not always uh, want to enable KSM or you can't run an experiment. So there are two approaches I call. One is the kernel approach and the other one is, a, is an approach based on, um, on, a, on, on Dragon right now. So Dragon is basically, it's a proof of concept. It's not quite ready. I hacked something together. It, it works, but uh, I haven't... Um, open source it yet. Basically, the, the idea is with uh, Dragon that you go through all the virtual memory areas, collect the hashes for the, for the pages, and store it in a map, and then say, yeah, what is, my old, what is my sharing for the system or for the processes which I'm interested in? Um, that's the simple version, uh, the simple um, approach. Uh, of course, that approach has a certain disadvantage. It's pretty slow. Um, uh, right now, if, the, if you only have a few processes, it's probably okay. If you want to do it for the whole system, we need to do something else. So for the kernel ones, two ideas are, based, are that we calculate the hashes for the pages, or we have a means to calculate the hashes for the pages. So we can then figure out if, um, if, if KSM makes sense, if there is sharing. And the more advanced idea is that we actually keep the, the unstable and stable tree. Uh, we do not merge, uh, only keeping, keeping the trees. Um, uh, of course, that would give us the benefit that we have more accurate information how uh, how well the sharing is, um, but um, yeah, uh, it's it's only an idea that that I'm floating right now, because we also have that um, challenge at Meta that we have new um, workloads and we have to see how how well KSM works for them and creating new experiments for each of them is pretty um, time intensive. So I also talked to some uh, limitations. 
So I mentioned it already, um, KSM works best if the page size is smaller. Uh, the bigger the page size, the lower the probability that you have uh, uh, sharing. Um, also, security needs to be mentioned. So uh, it, if you control your workload, then this is less of a worry. However, if you run virtual machines or something like that, then you should probably look into the papers because there have been, at least in the described side channel attacks um, for KSM. So you should also um, consider if uh, that is a problem for your workload or not. Um, the other thing is KSM is not for every workload. So if your workload is latency sensitive, then it's probably not the right thing for you. So as a short recap um, of what I talked about, so we got a lot of new features with 6.4. So we got new metrics in syskernel MMKSM, uh, especially the channel profit metric. Uh, we get per process uh, metrics and um, the new process control API also came with 6.1 and we added the trace points. So with 6.6, uh, additional, um, uh, with 6 .6, uh, additional um, metrics came, which are helpful, uh, like pages scanned and KSM stats. And with 6.7, uh, the smart scan is coming and on the horizon, uh, depending when we agree. Uh, also, the auto-tune or the, um, the advisor is coming. So... Um, I also want to thank uh, people who helped. So David, Johannes, Rick, uh, and Teshun, and uh, of course, uh, which I missed, is the, are the System D people, which helped me getting the change into System D. All right. Thank questions. You. Yeah. Do we have any questions from the room? Oops. Um, thank you for the nice talk. Um, actually, about two years ago, there was a patch set for daemon that for extending daemon to for the monitor read only or write only uh, monitoring. And the purpose of the patch set was to use the information to find better uh, candidate of the KSM that is finding read only pa the pages that more being re read that then written and then use that as a candidate of the uh, sampling for KSM. Uh, do you think that makes sense? I mean, the author has not sent the new revision of the patch set, so it has already lost more than two years, but this reminds me of the patch set, so I was just wondering if that idea makes sense. Maybe you can direct me to that patch set and I can have a look. Um, but uh, I think for, at least for our workloads, it's writable pages where we see the sharing. It's not uh, read-only pages. So, but I'm sure there might be workloads that can benefit from it. So for auto-tuning, would it make sense to do more aggressive scanning if the system is low on memory and then less aggressive scanning if the system has enough memory? Because it's not a big problem if the system has a lot of memory, right? So um, would that be another we, approach that you can take? If we if we are already in a hole in terms of memory, I think it's already too late. Okay. So because uh, the the danger that I see is also that you aggravate the problem, um, because when you the system is already trying very aggressive aggressively to scan at that point. Uh, and um, we might not have CPU for that. Um, so just to channel John, because I don't see him, um, it seems like a lot of this was about learning how to properly profile and configure KSM and all that stuff. Have you put that in the documentation in the kernel? It seems like that would be a good, like... Yes, so there is... There is so there is additional documentation. So the stuff that I have is documented. Uh, 
Okay. So if you go to the, um, one second. So here are some useful links. So if you go to the KSM documentation, you will see these additional features documented Excellent. and also explained how it works. So that's, uh, that's all there. Awesome. Something that wasn't clear, oh, sorry. Uh, something that wasn't clear to me uh, from the description was, is this auto, the auto scaling feature you're proposing, is that happening from the kernel itself or a user space daemon that's tuning No, in? it's the kernel itself. Okay. So basically you set three, three parameters. So you set target scan time, CPU min, and max, and that's all. And they have default values, which should probably work for most cases. But uh, if you have a very high number of pages, or if you have very little number of pages, you might want to tune accordingly. Also, if you are tight on CPU, then you might also um, want to squeeze these values uh, a bit to, to your uh, specific situation. Okay, thanks. Uh, hi, I have a few, que uh, few questions. Yes, the first one is about the, the uh, what is the overhead that did you observe when you enable uh, KSM, especially the CPU and memory overhead for the uh, KSMD? So um, the, the memory overhead you can actually calculate. So you can, um, if you, if, if you look at the documentation, there is a formula that you can follow and it explains you how to calculate the, the memory overhead. Uh, but it's not that much because the, the only thing that you, or there are two things that you have, you have the RMAP items, uh, which is, is small, and then you have the one for the stable tree because the, the unstable tree doesn't cost you because it's part of the RMAP item. It's, the list is overlaid with the tree. Um, what was the second part of the question? Uh, CPU overhead. So CPU overhead, of course, depends um, how aggressively you scan. But uh, what we see when during startup, when we scan with 5,000 on a Skylake machine, we see uh, up to 60% CPU usage for the KSMD kernel background thread. Um, if once, once we're in the more stable phase, it goes back to 30% with the new features that I described. Thank you. Uh, the second question is, uh, you didn't mention this in your uh, uh, talk directly, is uh, uh, I assume you noticed no uh, performance degradation on the service level after you enable uh, KSM? I'm not sure I understood the question. Uh, did you notice any service level performance uh, degradation after you enable the KSM? So, yeah. so what we saw actually, because we are memory bound is uh, because our memory boundness is alleviated, we see throughput increases. So our throughput increased at least, uh, or sp especially on the Skylake machines, which are the older machines where we have memory bound and CPU bound. On uh, Copper Lake, we, we see uh, also memory savings, but um, in terms of throughput and latency, it's, Pretty much the same. Thank you. Yeah, but uh, this is all very. This you have to consider. This is all very workload uh, um, dependent. So your your workload might behave differently. Yeah. Uh, sorry. One last question. Yeah. So uh, why do we need to do this in the kernel space? Because I assume the user space already have all the information, like you know the entire physical memory. And you know the user space could scan the entire physical memory, and you know find some uh, duplication, and uh, tell the kernel, "Hey, just deduplicate these pages." Uh, I think that would be pretty expensive. So, for some applications, you could absolutely do this better. But in at least for this particular case, it's a giant Django thing, and that <laughs> like modifying that to do have any intelligence is out of the question right so like this is more useful for applications that are like built on some sort of stack that you don't have that kind of fine-grained control over um but you're right obviously for like more complicated applications it'd probably be better to use the advise stuff as Stefan pointed out right <laughs> hi 
Uh, have you tested this on uh, machines which are large and have uh, very distant NUMA nodes from each other? And uh, any idea? <laughs> any test on that? We're not really a NUMA shop. <laughs> Okay, so, but I can say, um, so there might be a future update. So, because currently I'm starting to evaluate this with uh, some AI workloads. Uh, some of these machines have humongous memory, but I cannot share anything yet. So we might need um, bigger changes or different approaches uh, because the machines I'm talking about, we're talking about 1.5 tera main memory. So, um, them, they are most likely require changes to KSM to make it work there. Also, the other, or at least the initial discussions that we had, is not all all parts of the AI workload uh, will benefit from this. So there are certain pieces. So uh, 1.5 tera sounds scary, but actually it might be a lot less um, because you have to consider which ones are actually good candidates. Because there are certain uh, things like uh, inference, um, which are very, at least for us, very uh, latency sensitive, so they are not good candidates. Thanks. Just a, a note more than a question. We've written a few things that have uh, IOMUs um, and some KVM stuff, um, and KSM is tuning that up really, really high to get it to rip pages out from underneath you is a really nice way to check your your, inval your TLB invalidations and make sure they're working right and then like run a hard workload and make sure things aren't corrupted. So we used it a lot in that case just to hammer our hardware and our drivers. Not a question, just a statement. Okay. <laughs> tips, tips for others doing similar things. You do well? Uh, Does KSM page merging affect anything about how the uh, pages are accounted with MemCG? No. Okay. So, so KSM works at the global level, so it doesn't work on the in, in, uh, individual C group level. So when you say you want to share, uh, sh share a certain memory region, it's basically sharing it globally. All right, we're coming up on our break at 4 p.m. Uh, any final questions? Uh, I didn't see any on the chat, so. All right, thank you very much. Thank you.